A Cartesian coordinate system is a system in which the location of a point P is given by coordinates and those coordinates represent its distances from a perpendicular lines. And those lines intersect at a point which is called origin. Suppose a point P in a Cartesian system where it is represented in X, Y, Z coordinates. Now, if you draw a vector from origin up to this point P, that is called a position vector and we can uh, represent it with A now. So this A vector has component AX along X axis, AY along Y axis and AZ along Z axis where this small ax is the unit vector along x-axis and this small ay is the unit vector along y-axis and this small az is the unit vector along z-axis. So we can write vector a in Cartesian coordinates as a vector is equal to the first term plus the second component plus the third component. We can also take the magnitude of this vector by simply a is equal under the root of ax square plus ay square plus az square. We can find the unit vector along this a vector and that is equal to a complete vector divided by its magnitude. Now suppose that this point P is in cylindrical symmetry. Now then we need to represent this point P in new coordinates and those new coordinates are rho phi z where rho is the radius of the cylinder passing through this point P and uh, phi is azimuthal angle which is measured from x axis in the x y plane and z is the same as it, wa it was in the case of Cartesian systems. Please note that in the direction of uh, rho we have a unit vector a rho and uh, in the direction of phi we can take a unit vector a phi, which is actually tangential to the point, which is supposed to be a point of any circle. And uh, a z is the unit vector in the direction of z. So now we can write a vector a in cylindrical coordinates as a is equal to a rho a, a rho plus capital A phi a phi plus capital A z A z and we can also take the magnitude of this vector by simply take the under root of square of the first term plus square of the second plus square of the third and please note this row which is a uh, which is the radius of a cylinder can can be from start from zero up to infinite and uh, the limit of the phi as you can see is up to two pi so you have zero up to two pi is the limit for five. And Z is, uh, could be from minus infinite up to plus infinite. And uh, by taking the dot product of unit vector with itself, it will equal to one. And if you take a dot product of uh, one of the unit vector with the another unit vector, you will take the zero because there is 90 degree angle between both. And in case if you want to take the cross between uh, any two unit vectors, then by you keeping the cycle, cycle order, you can take the third unit vector as a result. Now to find the relationships between the Cartesian coordinates x, y, z and the cylindrical coordinates rho phi z, <clears throat> let's take uh, another Let's take a part of this figure where you can see we have uh, a row which is the radius of the cylinder and we drop the perpendicular from uh, this point up to, uh, to the x-axis and y-axis. And now by using the sine phi and cos phi trigonometric uh, equations, we simply can find out the x component and the y component. So as a result, we have x is equal to rho cos of phi and y is equal to rho sine of phi. And z uh, is the same in both coordinate systems. Now by taking the square of this first equation and square of the second, and then when we add up, we get rho is equal x square plus y square under root. 
and uh, we can also find out the phi by taking the tan of uh, these two components. So that is phi is equal to tan inverse y or x. It means if you simply divide the second equation by this equation, you, you can easily get uh, the phi equation. And again, z is equal to z. Now, important is to find out the relation between the unit vectors of both, uh, between the relation of unit vectors along Cartesian coordinates and cylindrical coordinates. So it means our next goal is to, fi uh, to find the AX in terms of cylindrical components. And, uh, and similarly, the AY in terms of a cylindrical components a rho a phi for doing this let's take x y plane of uh, this figure so it means i uh, now in next figure you will see only this plane x y plane where, where you will see this uh, row vector and uh, you will see a uh, phi over here so here is the x y plane and you see the row vector and along the row vector you, you can see the unit vector uh, which is a rho and uh, phi because it's uh, rotated in this in the anti-clockwise direction if we simply take uh, the unit vector at this point so that would be a phi and uh, if you want to draw the unit vector on other side so you will simply get minus a phi now, in uh, vector calculus, vector algebra, you know, if you wanna, uh, you wanna shift the vector from one place to another without changing its uh, angle or direction, so you can do that. So let's take this x-axis over here. And please remember, along the x-axis, we have a unit vector, vector and that is ax. So simply I shift the unit vector along X axis over here. And that is this yellow uh, arrow, which is a X. And uh, also I can shift this uh, a row over here. So you can see I have draw a row here also. And uh, now because this angle is phi, so because I, ha I haven't changed anything, while moving the vector from here to here. So this will be, this angle would be same. So I have phi over here. So now the point is that uh, because I have to find AX in terms of uh, A rho and A phi. So let's, let's first drop the uh, perpendicular between, between uh, uh, and the, at the center of this triangle. And uh, by doing this, as a result, we get uh, two right, right angle triangles. One is this, one is this. Now the, now the goal is to find this part. This You can see this red line over here, exactly on this uh, right angle triangle. And you can also see the black line over here on this right angle triangle. Now our goal is to find the length of this red line and also the length of this black line. So we will add up both. So we will, as a result, get AX, this equation. So for doing that, if uh, I simply consider here phi and uh, take the sine of uh, this right angle triangle, I will get sine of phi into minus A phi. And if I consider at this point, phi, which, uh, which should be equal to this phi angle. So no, and then apply the cos phi, then I will get this line and that would be the cos phi a rho. So as a result, by adding up this line and this line, I'll get ax is equal to cos of phi a rho minus sine of phi a rho. Similarly, I will do the same technique over here now. So for that, you just need to find the length of uh, this side of this right angle triangle and this side of this right angle triangle. 
So for finding out this side of the right angle triangle, I'll just apply the cos phi. And as a result, I'll get from this right angle triangle, the length of this side cos of phi, a phi. And similarly, if I have a phi over here at this point, and I apply the sine of phi now, I'll get this, the length of this side, and that is sine of phi a rho. So as a result, I'll get a y is equal sine of phi a rho plus cos of phi a rho, a phi. And you know, a z uh, are the same in both coordinate systems. You can also write these three equations in terms of a rho, a phi, a z, because actually we need this because we want to put these uh, three unit vector equations in our, our uh, vector, a vector equation, where we have a rho unit vector a rho, a phi unit vector a phi plus a z unit vector a z. So by putting a rho over here and a phi over here, we will get a vector is equal to this term multiply with a rho plus this term multiply with a phi and uh, plus this term. We can also write where, where we have from this equation, a rho is equal to this and a phi is equal to this and a z is equal to a z. 